Okay, at the Indianapolis Speedway entrance. So, this is a rotary now that goes around. Chris let me out, and I'm uh, taking a film of the, the speedway. Unfortunately, can't get inside, but it's good enough. See you guys. So, this is the Bridgeton covered bridge, and they claim this is the prettiest bridge and covered bridge in Indiana. So, <laughs> there goes Chris. He just walked up and took a peek. I'll walk up inside so it shows up better so I can look down through there. Like I say, you can't drive on this one. But it's long. I'd say that's about to almost 100 yards long, That this bridge. So these are pretty cool. I like how the structure of it, it has these arches, the arch supports. Seems like all of them are are engineered in the same way as that with the beams and stuff. Well, there's the river. Alright, that's it from this covered bridge. Now there's 31. We've seen two, but we're not going to see any more. I don't think I think this might be the last. Take care. See you guys later. So, here at Chris's, it's Sunday, November. I'm still hanging out with Chris. Probably head out midweek. I think he's got to go to the VA on Tuesday, so I'll probably go with him to that. Since I got VA insurance also, I'll see how what that's all about because I haven't used the VA yet. But he had a bunch of boxes and stuff we uh, I took care of for him this morning. A little uh, campfire. Kind of a little lean-to where he's got a wood shed. Yeah, nice little setup here. This is an old quarry, I guess. But I used to mine coal here. So this is kind of the quarries that are all over the place that are left over after that work was done a hundred years ago or more. And one of his sheds is kind of a hillbilly hot tub out here. <laughs> and uh, he's got a pretty good rain catchment system that he, and he uses. Sweet little setup for him. But the biggest thing I like is the same thing my brother's got on his log cabin front porch is this porch swing. <laughs> These are comfortable. So I'm going to take this quick video, keep an eye on the fire over there, and sit in that porch swing and enjoy the day. Yeah, I'm in uh, Indiana, and the temperature today, I guess he said it was supposed to get up in the 60s, which, boy, if I could get someplace the temperature was like this all the time it'd be ideal but it's going to get cold here and they're going to have they're going to have snow just like the north country not quite as bad but they're definitely going to get cold weather in fact i think tomorrow night maybe it's supposed to go down in the uh, <laughs> like 11 degrees so i'll be out nursing the rv um because i plan on staying a little longer than that Nursing the RV, make sure nothing freezes, keep the heat on and keep it warm in there. So anyways, that's it from here, from Chris's place in Indiana. Talk to you guys later. So we just stopped in the Mayberry Cafe in Danville, Indiana, where they have a tribute to the Andy Griffith show. So they got <coughs> memorabilia, all kinds of pictures on the wall. They got the TVs going with the with the show. There's Chris taking it easy over there in the, one of the chairs here in the lobby. We just stopped in to have a coke here, and he wanted to show me show me this. They used to have a squad car out front, but I guess it got total people ran into it. So they're in the works now of getting a new uh, patrol car for out front. It was on the TV series Andy Griffith. So I'm sure a lot of people remember that. All right, that's it from uh, Mayberry Cafe in Danville, Indiana. So this is my very first boondocker welcome stop. This is Dave and Wendy's property, and they're in Sullivan, Missouri, or properly said, Missouri, if you're from here. So this is actually an old grain elevator that him and his 
his uh, wife are retrofitting into kind of like a little place to stay. I'm, uh, I'm going to be showing you something out here. I've seen these before in uh, magazines and on TV. Yes, so there are eight of these huge shopping carts made, and the gentleman Dave actually was the guy they get flown around the country to actually fix these things. He, he pretty much built them. So this guy uh, used to have a racing career uh, with Wise Racing, I believe he said. So it probably wasn't something I paid attention to when I was young, but this guy was the real deal. He had some uh, records uh, in different uh, classes. <laughs> so quite an honor to stay here. Anyway, I'm going to go and uh, walk inside this uh, green elevator slash little bungalow and check it out. So this is a work in progress inside this uh, grain elevator slash bungalow. So they've already got microwave or fridge, sink, oven. As you can see the round part of the back of the uh, silo, he's got the ceiling all drywalled, got lighting in, recessed lighting. Looks like they've got a a round couch set up. <laughs> and he got a TV. He could actually he could live in here. This is a cool little place. And it looks like there's an upstairs loft. I'll go up there and we'll take take a look at that here on the stairs. So we're going upstairs in the unit. So this is a fantastic bedroom. They've got a a window window put in up here. So there's plenty of light. And as you can see, that's the peak of the uh, the grain. I guess it'd be a grain silo. <laughs> I guess they uh, took this apart. Uh, they were getting rid of somebody, and he he took it apart and brought it back, and and uh, is working on it. This is the little bathroom. He hasn't completed it yet, but it's set to be a little bathroom up here. This is fantastic. <laughs> it's really cool. All right, so we'll go back downstairs and uh, take a walk back and take a look at that giant shopping cart that used to be motorized. Like I said, there's eight of them things around the country. And the guy that uh, owned them, Bob, used to lease them out to different companies and stuff for a monthly leasing fee. And Dave was the guy that would get flown in different places to fix them once they they were broken. He was telling me that uh, Earnhardt actually owns one of them. He's got one in a hangar someplace up in, at the airport park. And if there's anything wrong with it, he, he said he used to go up and do it. I don't think he does it anymore. I think he just got too busy that he couldn't keep flying around the country fixing those things. So let's go back and take a look at that. So the name of this place I'm at is actually off of uh, an oak road old oak road so there's tons of oak trees here but Dave was telling me this one is actually an elm and elm trees up in our part of the world have the elm disease but this one is still hanging around it's the weirdest elm I've ever seen but anyway it kind of looks like an elm it looks like elm bark so. so we're getting closer to this giant shopping cart I'll start you up again when we get closer. So, yes, this is a giant shopping cart. Dave, the guy that fixes, used to fix these and built these. Help build them. They, used, they were thinking about making this into a uh, competitor back in the day with Bigfoot uh, monster truck. So they could use this to basically <laughs> crush stuff like that uh, did back in the day but I guess they found out the axles on these at the time if they if they did that were like ten thousand dollars an axle so they bagged it and just went with this configuration but let me get up close here so it looks like it's got a front end suspension spring suspension <laughs> oh used to have an engine in it, but the engine isn't in it anymore, and you actually used to... So the steering rod went up to the 
upper part of the basket and there's a steering wheel up there where you used to sit and I see a gear selector up there too for when the engine used to be in this thing. I'm assuming that uh, old keg there is probably the gas tank originally. Battery box. <laughs> There's the rear end differential that the engine was hooked to when it was in here. But he had two of them on this property at one time. He's, th he's thinking about him and Wendy maybe starting a camping area and having it called like a la, a la carte in the, in the name and this being out front to advertise. Which is a pretty cool idea, if you ask me. But uh, this is unbelievable. I guess he said this whole top part is made out of stainless steel. But that took some work, and man, that had to be expensive. But like I said, there was eight of these things. Oh, there's a, there's the brake brake unit right there with the brake pedal. In the reservoir for the brake fluid. <laughs> oh man, this has been cool seeing these things run. I remember seeing these in in magazines and on TV shows and stuff. And I'm sure there are still a few that are still running out there. Seems like they were when the kids took over for this from their father or whatever. They they junked a few of them for scrap metal and stuff, but. Uh, they wanted to save one for posterity. Didn't want all that work for all those years to be destroyed. But like I say, Earnhardt's got one of these things stored someplace. I don't know where he said he's got it stored in a hangar someplace, airplane hangar. But that would be cool to see one of these working. All right, that's it from the shopping cart. I'll just back up. I'm going to take some uh, walk here. They've got like, uh, I think they said 12 acres here of land. And not much different than the land up my part of the world. And I figured I'd take a walk and one of their trails here and, and enjoy the day because it's nice here today. It's nice and warm. I'm getting into warmer and warmer temperatures and that's what I'm looking for. I think my next stop at my next boondocker welcome location is down near Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I've already got that set up for arriving there tomorrow afternoon. So it's about a five hour drive from from my location here in Sullivan, uh, Missouri. All right, that's it from the shopping cart. Take care, you guys. So Dave was telling me he had an old stop sign back here. He made these signs, I guess, for Wendy in order to give these trails names. This is the uh, wash tub way. <laughs> uh, pretty clever. So this would be a great place for a camping area back in here. Boy, I'm seeing squirrels. You probably can't see my camera, but I'm seeing squirrels running every which way around here. I seen something earlier over here to the right. It looked pretty big. Could have been a dog. But or it could have been bear, their dog. Anyways. I figured I'd show you these <laughs> these two cool things. All right, on we go. Okay, here's the other sign he mentioned, stop ahead, which if you look up there, that's where the stop sign is. I don't know if there's going to be any more of these or not, but eh, it's pretty, pretty clever. Well, I got a few of these up on my property. This would be a tree stand for... Sitting here watching deer. It's pretty cool. Looks like it could still be used. It looks pretty. Looks pretty strong. Got to come along around the tree to actually hold it in place, which is a good idea. You can that way you can adjust it as the tree gets bigger. All right, just figure, Dave. I found the tree, your tree stand. He used to hunt. He doesn't hunt as much anymore. He said, "I'm kind of the same way." I think as you get older. You don't get out there and get out as much in the cold weather. Hopefully there's enough young people coming on board to take it over. Anyways, let's continue on. Okay, let's jump on this trail, Bear Paws. I think you can see that. All right, so let's head this way. So this is like a little feeding area. I guess the uh, 
He puts corn out here and the deer come out and get some corn. I think that he says he's got some turkey. Seems like turkey are all over the United States now. Let the turkey come out and they feed here on this corn feeder. Fills that up with corn. But uh, I think their boondocking welcome site actually shows a picture of this with the, uh, some deer standing around here. Oh, and they do have a uh, they do have a swing in that tree, which is one of my favorite things. Are those port swings and tree swings like that. And again, the shopping cart over there in the corner. So I've made the trek around the property. Very nice. No, no reason they couldn't set up a camping area back in here. It would be really cool. All right, that's going to be it from here. Probably, I'm not sure if I'll take any more footage from here, but I'll I'll see you guys in the Tulsa, Oklahoma area on my next stop. Take care.